As we departed Sydney, we were full of excitement, not knowing what the next four months might bring. But by the time we reached Perth, we were going off like a frog in a sock. But with only our backpacks and no return ticket, we needed a car. So we spent the morning sussing out some local car dealerships and test driving different cars. We had a nav checked over by a mechanic and it was time to buy. All right, so finally, after all the looking, looking around at different car dealerships today, we finally get to spend some serious cashola and buy our car for the trip. We're very excited and we're ready to go. How bloody good. With a bit of paperwork and a congratulatory handshake, it was time to start the adventure. So after all the planning we've been through, the few nights we've spent in Perth getting stuffed around, spending all our money on this beautiful beast of a car, we're finally hitting the road and we're on the way to the Pinnacle Desert. Let's get bloody into it, eh? As we head north, we'll be stopping off at the Pinnacle Desert, Red Bluff, Carnarvon Gorge, and of course, Shark Bay. But we barely make it out of Perth and we find this guy on the side of the road. Unfortunately, echidnas seem to have a knack for getting themselves into trouble when crossing highways. But luckily for this one, there was some parkland down the road for a safe release. A couple hours outside of Perth and we arrived in Nambung National Park at the Pinnacles Desert. Now I'm gonna keep it brief, but these limestone structures were formed around 25,000 years ago and they are significant both culturally and environmentally providing a range of habitat for local wildlife. As we started to drive through a more arid environment, the desert reptiles started coming out to play. Well, how exciting is this, guys? My favourite lizard in Australia, I reckon. They don't really like being touched too much, so you distract them on this side, and you pick them up from the other side. Anyway, once you pick them up, they're usually quite, quite harmless. You can hold them for a while. I'm just going to get this one off the road and put him back into the bushes because I would hate to see him get skittled by a car. There we go. <laughs> Have a look at his big blue tongue. He wants to show us again. Oh, I think he might have had enough. Let's put him back in the bushes, eh? But where there's one, there's usually more. How cool is this? I've managed to come across a baby shingleback lizard. Now the wind made an absolute meal of this footage, but here's what I was trying to say. Shinglebacks usually give birth to two fully formed live young that are about one third the size of their mother. That's the equivalent of a human giving birth to an eight year old. And this was the smallest one I've seen in the wild. Very often the wildest creatures come out after dark. And as the sun dipped behind the horizon, we braced ourselves for what might come out next. I wasn't even remotely surprised when our first animal of the night was this huge desert scorpion ready for action. So we're on our way to Coral Bay and we've been driving all night. We've almost hit cows, roos, cats, and we've seen a lot of dead snakes and dead things, but we finally come across a really cute little knobtail gecko and he's absolutely gorgeous. Have a look at that guy. I've never come across these before, but I'm finally coming across some cool wildlife here in Western Australia. All right, mate, we'll put you back on the side of the road so you don't get squashed. This snake had just been hit by a car literally just before we drove past it. It was not moving, completely dead, and it seems like he's just come back from the dead. Look at him, he's starting to come to. I, if, he, if he recovers from this, I'll be very surprised. But when it comes to wildlife injuries, you certainly can't win them all. And unfortunately for this highly venomous Western brown snake, his journey ends here. And after a couple of minutes of sitting with him, he passed away in the sun. Rest in peace, little buddy. When driving through the desert or on sandy surfaces, it's important to lower your tyre pressure so you don't get bogged. Now it's good to go to about 18 psi, which will help you get through pretty much any obstacle. What a beauty. Now I 
I honestly don't know how I keep spotting wildlife when I'm so busy talking to the camera. But all of a sudden, this thorny devil walked out straight in front of us. This is the thorny devil. Now we're driving our way down to Skipjack Bay at the moment. It's a very dirty, sandy road. And we come across this guy. Now thorny devils, they can eat up to 10,000 ants per day. And they just look like they shouldn't exist, really. They're just so cute. There's, I don't know what to say about them. They just don't look like they should be alive. I don't think I'm gonna um, annoy him for too long because they do get quite stressed out. Just take him in for a second. He's unreal. All right, let's leave him be. We gotta get back to Skipjack Bay before it gets dark. What a cracking lizard. The bulls really started to congregate on the side of the road just after the sun started going down. So we slowed the speed right down to see what other wildlife we could find. All right, so we've just decided to go for a night drive. Um, and we saw this little guy crossing the street. I thought it was best for us to get him off the road so he doesn't get skittled or give someone a flat tire. It's just another beautiful echidna escorted safely off the road. But last night, not everyone got so lucky. And as I pulled this big girl off the road to prevent any other accidents from happening, I noticed she was carrying a joey. And as I looked a little closer, all hope was lost. Now I know road incidents can be unavoidable at times, but if you do hit a kangaroo, or any marsupial for that matter, make sure to check its pouch for young. There's a good chance this joey may have survived. But it was our last day in the region, and as we crossed the Gascoigne River, we entered the Kennedy Range National Park. This vast sandstone landscape is remnants of an ancient inland sea and shares many characteristics of Monument Valley in the States. So today we decided to go 200 kilometres inland from Carnarvon to a place called Honeycomb Gorge. When we arrived, we were blown away by the spectacular scenery. I've never seen anything quite like this place. I would love to see it in the wet season. Have a look at this. These beautiful honeycomb cavities were eroded by wind and the water spray from an adjacent seasonal waterfall. Alright, so we're just driving down the highway and I, I spotted a, a dragon on the road. I knew it was a dragon, I knew it was alive. And as soon as I picked him up, he started playing dead. Now, although it didn't look like he'd been hit by a car, I decided to keep an eye on him for about an hour to make sure he was all right. He was given the all clear and he was safely released. A nice positive way to finish our stay in Shark Bay. How do you say goodbye to this? I guess all good things must come to an end. Thanks for tuning in to another week of Aussie Wild Action. Be sure to join us next week when we go swimming with humpback whales in Ningaloo Reef. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out.